Hey guys, what's up? It's me, LEGO Lee 3 Today I'm here, and today we have a brand new LEGO Star Wars set review here for the Rebel Combat Frigate. This set retails for 110 US dollars, has 936 pieces, and I got my copy off LEGO Shop at Home. Now before we get started, take a look at the description down below. Please click on the link so you can subscribe to my new YouTube channel, Funky Funko. Also go like my Facebook page, follow me on Twitter, and follow me on Instagram. And while you're at it, give this video a big thumbs up. The first minifigure included with this set here is Ezra Bridger. This is the third set I believe he's come in, and LEGO has yet to update this minifigure, which is really ticking me off. If you watch the show, Ezra clearly has a darker skin tone than this, and his hair to me has always looked to be dark blue. LEGO messed up on the Canon figure. They gave him black hair in the original Ghost set, and then they fixed that. But for some reason, they have yet to fix Ezra. He is still the same minifigure, and I think his printing all around is fantastic, and that hairpiece works really well. It's just the color of his skin and the color of his hair are not accurate at all. Getting around that, I like the lightsaber. It's a pretty good representation of it from the show. Torso and leg printing both work. The face print, again, besides the skin tone, I think looks pretty good. And all that detail is continuing onto the back and a good double-sided face. But Lego seriously fix the problems with this figure. Here is Chopper, only his second appearance in Lego minifigure form, and he looks really good. Besides one thing, like most astronaut droid minifigures these days, his head print is very tilted, which LEGO needs to get on top of that issue. It's getting kind of out of hand. Besides that, the details are really good. They continue all around his head. It looks great. I love the stubby body and the stubby legs, but the head still has the tilted printing. Here is Agent Callus, the same minifigure that came with the ATDP set, and he was a great minifigure then, and he's still a great minifigure now. Nothing exclusive but he does look really cool. I love his torso printing, the helmet piece is perfect for this minifigure, and the face underneath there with the trademark sideburns just really looks great. The back printing and the double-sided face work as well, so a good Agent Callus minifigure. Our next minifigure is finally a new and exclusive character to this set. This is Commander Sato, and unlike Ezra, they actually gave this minifigure a unique skin tone, which I really appreciate. I think his details are relatively plain, but they work for the character. The hairpiece doesn't. It's a good hairpiece, but I think they should have given us something with more of a flat top. If you look at his appearance in the show, his hair does not really resemble this at all. His back printing is good, and I like the double-sided face, so a good character to get besides the lame hairpiece. Let's be honest, the first four minifigures we looked at are nice designs, and they're pretty accurate to the show, but they aren't too interesting of figures. And then we get to the fifth and final minifigure with this set, Rebels' grown-up version of Ahsoka Tano. And wow, this minifigure is exquisite. I love this figure. It's good contention for one of the best minifigures of 2016 so far. And the main reason for that is the headpiece. Not a new piece, but a new print. And that printing is brilliant. There are so many opportunities LEGO could have had to mess up the paint here, but it's nothing. Nothing is messed up. It looks perfect. I love that. You flip it around, and from the back, so many different stripes that all look perfect. That piece was just absolutely nailed by LEGO. And then her face print. This is the first time we've ever gotten an Ahsoka minifigure without the creepy Clone Wars eyes, and it looks really cool. I really love the new face print for her. Her torso and leg printing also work very well. Double-sided face is great, back printing is great. And then finally, she has a new color for the lightsaber blade. It's kind of molded now in the medium blue, the lightest possible translucent blue that LEGO has. And while the color isn't 100% accurate, to the show, I think it's the best thing LEGO has to represent her lightsaber color from the show, and I love getting the lightsabers in a new color here. That is really cool. This minifigure all across the board is fantastic. Here is the Rebel Combat Frigate itself. Like a lot of bigger Star Wars sets these days, this thing does have the very convenient carrying handle, which makes this thing really easy to maneuver around. Unfortunately though, when you leave the carrying handle alone by itself on top of the vehicle, it honestly looks a little bit awkward and stands out to me. A good place to start on this vehicle here is the front, and this might be my favorite part of the entire set right here, this piece at the front. 
You might recognize that piece being the same cockpit piece that's used in the LEGO Jedi Interceptor sets. It has been reprinted here specifically just for this set, and this print here is immaculate. I absolutely adore this. Look how awesome that looks. That is such a cool new print specific for just this set. I absolutely love that. Now the design up front here I think looks pretty good. The shaping is nice. The curves are pretty good. A slight gap right here, but that might have been kind of unavoidable based on the design. And now unfortunately they use some Technic pieces to build the design. So it is very sturdy, but it tends to wobble around right here which can get kind of annoying. You know what also gets very annoying are these spring-loaded launchers. I love these for playability, they're great for kids, but these ones are put in a particular spot that it is extremely easy to accidentally hit these things and they'll go launching all across your room and they'll be lost forever. I really hate the position of these things on this set. However, these guns here look pretty cool and they can rotate 360 degrees around, which I do like for playability's sake. Moving along down the side here, there's some pretty nice greeble details. Chopper's headpiece is used really effectively here. I like the blue translucent parts right there to represent some kind of window on the vehicle. I think that was accomplished pretty well. And the top here I think also looks pretty good. Some sticker details, but they work out fine. And I really like the use of the Friends cupcake piece here in silver to be like a little greeble detail. That was really cool. And then up here, there's one of the main play features of this set. This entire roof section right here can lift off to reveal the interior. Now, honestly, the interior does not look super exciting to me. It's mostly just grays and some tans and reds here and there. It's a pretty boring looking inside, but it is also very practical. Up front here, lots of gaps. That's definitely a problem right there, but it looks pretty good. I love the use of this piece. You can actually see through it right there. That's really awesome. And you can actually fit one minifigure in the front right here. You need to bend them back a little bit so they can actually fit, but they still do fit, so that's really cool. And they can pilot the ship right there. Now the back section here, there's actually a good bit of room. On the wall right here, there are three clips to hold all three lightsabers included with this set. There's two seats in the middle where you can put Chopper and Ezra, and then a seat at the back with a small little control panel that you can put Ahsoka. Now Ahsoka has a gigantic headpiece, so you have to lean her all the way back so she can fit inside the vehicle. But once you do that, all of the Rebel minifigures included with the set can fit inside, which is a huge plus, something that not every LEGO set accomplishes these days. Now this sort of middle towards back section right here has some good shaping, again, just a little bit gappy, but I really like the use of the wheel piece right here on its side. A nice looking section right here. Unfortunately though, this entire section is made just for structure of this vehicle. I thought that it was gonna be able to lift off, there'd be more interior, maybe some storage space or something. Nope nothing there's nothing back here this is completely just structure with mostly technic pieces you can't do anything back here which is pretty lame the simulated bridge up top here of course minifig scale is gonna be a little bit different in size but it actually looks pretty cool to me again with the blue windows it looks pretty nice i like the dishes here and there are some dishes on the back as well so that actually looks pretty cool and one more thing, you do have these 360 degree rotating turrets that have stud shooters on top of them. These are good for playability and they don't fire off as randomly as the spring-loaded missiles. However, these things love to fly around and it's hard to get them to stay in the same position. So here's the back of this vehicle right here. These engines look pretty intense. I like this design quite a bit using that bionicle piece right there. That is really cool. And there's actually one awesome play feature back here. Simply by twisting on the engine right here, you can cause these pieces to rotate out using these gears right here. This is an extremely, I mean, extremely smooth gear mechanism it works perfectly and i absolutely love it that is a great play feature for this set but it also reveals yet another problem back here you can see these gears this whole part right here looks kind of hollow to me this kind of cuts off awkwardly lots of exposed holes for pegs and whatnot this whole thing right here just looks weird it looks awkward and kind of unfinished back here it doesn't look too bad when these things are folded in it kind of covers everything up but when they're folded out which makes the vehicle look cooler in my opinion from this angle it definitely makes it look worse 
from this angle, but I do like all of the engines. That is really cool. So this thing has lots of firepower from the back, but there are some still issues here. Every time Lego makes a new Star Wars set that's a vehicle that's never been made in Lego form before, I get really excited because I love adding new vehicles to my Lego Star Wars collection. And of course, this set fits that bill perfectly. And ultimately, I really enjoyed this set for the most part. There are some big issues to me. I pointed off some of the little gaps here and there. The handle looks pretty awkward. The back looks pretty unfinished in my opinion. And then I told you about the minifigure selection besides Ahsoka being a little bit disappointing. But the biggest flaw here, you guys guessed it, it's a Lego Star Wars set, and that would be the price. Now first off, this vehicle really isn't all that big. Here's it compared in size to the Ghost, which was $20 less and has more bulk to it, and they honestly feel like they should be about the same price, not $20 more for this set. And then the price for piece, $936, $110. Really, Lego, that's just bad and it's unacceptable. So this is a set that I really appreciate for being a brand new vehicle, and I really like it because it's unique and different, but there are some major issues holding it back from being great. That being said, I still think it's really good and that's why it's gonna get an 8.1 out of 10. Those are just my thoughts. I'd love to hear yours in the comment section down below. Also guys, don't forget to favorite this video and share this video with a friend. Please subscribe to this channel and I hope to see you guys next time on Star Wars Reviews. I'll see you guys later.